So this morning I was woken up at 6 a.m. by a scream. I mean, I thought that someone was screaming. So I literally like jumped out of my bed and I was like, oh my God, what's happening? Someone is yelling, screaming for help. Or, And then I realized that it was a rooster. That's how you know that... Um, If you're looking for a calm, relaxing place by the ocean in Panama where you can still have a very, very local experience, Santa Catalina is the right place. I have not been in a place like this for a very long time. To be honest, I don't know if I've ever been to a place like this. If you think Tulum or Changu in Bali, and then the exact opposite of that would be Santa Catalina. Good morning from Santa Catalina. It is my very first day here and I just woke up, had a lovely breakfast, pancakes with fruits and now I'm headed down to the beach to see the beach for the very first time. As you can see, my surroundings literally could not be more different to where I just came from. And I just came from Panama City, if you didn't see my last vlog. I mean, Panama City was so huge and so modern, and this is like another world. Santa Catalina is mainly known as a great place for surfing and diving, but my main motivation to come here was none of these things. I basically wanted to see Santa Catalina before it blows up. And after spending a couple of days here, I'm pretty sure that it will eventually happen. Santa Catalina has been on the tourist map of Panama for a while, but there's still not that many people coming here. Partly because getting here can be a bit tricky. It did take me eight hours to get here from Panama City. Even though it's only about 300 kilometers or maybe 350 kilometers, it took me about eight to nine hours to get here. I got to Santa Catalina by a public bus from Panama City. I did have to switch buses on the way in Sona and the whole trip cost me about $15. And it definitely wasn't difficult. I mean, it was a pretty pleasant travel day, but it just did take a while. An important thing to mention about Santa Catalina is that even though it is a surf town, it's not really like a hipster surf town yet. It might become one in the future. And uh, is it a good thing? I don't know. Both yes and no. It creates jobs for the people. So, you know, it helps the local economy. But at the same time, obviously, the place loses its charm. Santa Catalina is still a very small village. It's basically just two main streets, a couple of restaurants, hotels, some dive shops and surf schools. And that's pretty much it. And actually, until recently, Santa Catalina didn't even have an ATM. I think they might have gotten one just before I got there. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure though, because I did bring cash with me since I was warned that withdrawing money might be impossible there. Okay, so this is what you see when you reach the coast from from downtown Santa Catalina, no, from the center of Santa Catalina. In Santa Catalina, you basically have one main road and when you go down this main road to the sea, correction, ocean, we're by the Pacific Ocean, so now I can finally say ocean. Um, and when you reach the ocean, this is what you see. But I was told that there is a much better beach if you turn left from the main road and just walk for 15 minutes. I don't think it's gonna be that difficult to find it here because they're basically like, what, there's basically like one street and I saw one left turn. So I'm assuming that's the one I need to take. The sand is still wet. So I'm assuming that at night the water probably went up to here. All I see here is one restaurant behind me. Otherwise there's nothing else here really this is definitely no Tulum no Changu and I'm saying it in a positive way I mean I love Changu I did not like Tulum but those places are obviously very touristy and Santa Catalina feels very local to me these kids that are surfing there are probably like six eight years old 
Not even that. I think there is one who's older. I'm assuming the older one could be like 12 or something. And then the rest is like, you know, six years old surfing. Crazy. So cool though. Like it must be really nice to grow up in a place like this. Uh, this is one of these places where you just come and the whole life feels so different. Like the world that they live in here, it's so different to where I live and it's really nice to, I don't know, just be here and get a taste of this world. The plan for right now is to go back and change because I'm a little uncomfortable in this sarong. I mean, it's so hot and humid that it's basically like clistered. Clistered, is that an English word? Yeah, anyways, it's not very comfortable. So I'm gonna go back and change and wear some actual clothes before I go to the other beach, which is supposed to be the nice beach. Although for me, this was already pretty nice, so. So I'm staying at this place called Body Santa Catalina, which is also a hostel. They do have dorm rooms, but I'm staying in a private room. It's kind of like a little hut. It looks really cool. Like it's it's a vibe. It's a vibe that you do want to experience when you come here, when you come to a little surf village like this one. And this is what my little hut looks like inside. There's just basically a bed and yeah, a little space here and a bathroom. As you could see, I kept all my stuff on the floor because there was nowhere else to put it, which almost ended up in a huge disaster. My last day in Santa Catalina will unfortunately be forever remembered as one of the worst days I ever had traveling. And this morning I was actually walking up at 6 a.m. by someone screaming or I thought someone was screaming because it did sound like it and I just like jumped out of my bed and I was like, oh my God, what's happening? Is there something bad happening to someone? And then I realized it was a rooster. Um, <laughs> so I changed into something a little bit more comfortable and I am ready to head over to Playa El Estol. In Santa Catalina, you mostly hear two things. Either you hear music, loud music coming from everywhere, which I've already realized is a thing here in Panama. Yesterday in the bus, the bus driver was blasting like really loud music for like eight hours straight. Um, or you hear construction. There is so much construction happening here. You can definitely tell that this place is really booming and in a couple of years, it's gonna look very different. Apparently back in the day, there were only like two bars here, a couple of restaurants, uh, two hostels. I think now it's a little bit more, but still, if you come here, you really need to expect that this place is still very much underdeveloped. Oh, fun fact, there is no ATM in Santa Catalina. Not that I need an ATM for anything, but it does tell something about the level of development of this place. Last year I was in Mexico, in Puerto Escondido, so it's, it's in Oaxaca, it's a beach town in Oaxaca. And I thought that Puerto Escondido was already like really not touristy and local compared to Tulum or many other places. But it's, I mean, Puerto Escondido is like New York compared to Santa Catalina. Uh, it's, it's really such a completely different vibe. And I've been thinking about it a lot yesterday since I had a lot of time to think because I was in a bus for 10 hours or something like that. Um, traveling really does make you wiser and it's like every time you go somewhere new, you learn new things about that place, but you also like learn new things about where you come from and the places that you've seen before or you appreciate them on a whole different level. Like you get a better understanding of everything. You know, I started thinking about it in Panama City where I couldn't check the bus schedule online. It, it, it's just not a thing here. Like you have to go to the bus station to check it. And I kept thinking, you know, such a small thing that I've never, I never really thought about at home, you know? Just like you go on a website and you check bus or train schedule and that is it. And here I had to like make a whole trip to the bus station just to check the schedule. And it just really made me think how, 
sometimes we take small things like that for granted and like when you travel you realize also like what you have at home like you appreciate more you're more grateful for what you have at home so i made it to the other beach it's also completely empty there is nobody here beside uh, people who are doing some construction here and then there is this river in the middle and I've been told that depending on the tide the river can be very shallow so you can walk through it I think right now it looks shallow uh, but it can also be very deep the girl who works at the hostel told me that the other day it was more than one meter so it went like up to here Great success. Oh my god. Just look at this. This beach is huge and there is nobody here. I can count people on this beach. One, two, I think maybe three. Then there are like two surfers. <laughs> So majority of people come here for surfing either early in the morning, so around 6 a.m. or right before sunset. Uh, so I'm curious to see how busy this beach will get. So I'm done with the beach. I'm on my way back to the village because I'm already a little hungry, so I think it's time to eat. But I... So I was on my way to the village, but then I saw this really cute looking smoothie place. So I decided to step by and get myself a smoothie. I got myself a papaya and banana milk smoothie. It tastes so good. It tastes like something that I would always have as a child. One of my favorite like childhood memories is going to a supermarket with my mom. And then my mom would always give me like change to get myself a smoothie. And I was allowed to do it by myself. I was probably like, I don't know, six, seven at this point, maybe even younger. But I remember feeling like super independent. Like it was a really big deal that I could go by myself to the smoothie stand and I had to ask the lady for a smoothie. Very cute little place. And now let's get some food because I am stopping. So I just sat down at this very local place uh, and I ordered some fish with rice. Hopefully it's gonna be good. To be honest, I have no idea what I've ordered, but um, we'll see. My goal for today was to eat uh, in, a, in a very local place, like as local as possible, because yesterday I had pizza, which was not a good, not a good decision. So I just got my food. We've got some rice here. Um, this looks like lentils, soup, you know, fish and some salad on the side or maybe she said beans but it doesn't look like beans mm. okay and these are definitely lentils but they're very nice so i haven't had rice in such a long time oh my god true uh chicken kingdom look at these guys it was a very good idea to give that place a chance. I paid only five dollars for this meal and it was so good. Oh my god, what is this fruit? See this? What is it? So cute. So the last activity of today is gonna be watching the sunset. It really is so beautiful right now. The sky is literally on fire. Oh, it was such a good relaxing day. If you're looking for a nice, quiet, very chill place, 
in Panama by the ocean. Santa Catalina is definitely the place. I really enjoyed myself today and I'm looking forward to having another very relaxing day by the ocean tomorrow. I'm probably just gonna spend the whole day reading my book and journaling and yeah, that's probably all I'm gonna do tomorrow. If you haven't seen my other vlogs from Panama, check them out and I will see you in Buket or Buque. I haven't found out yet how to pronounce the name, but it's gonna be up in the mountains. And after that, I'm going to Bocas del Tor, which is another very popular location by the ocean here in Panama. But on the other side, the Atlantic Ocean side, I don't know if you can see that, but you can definitely hear. Um, the whole freaking floor is covered in water. And this is all my, like my computer is there, all my electronics. And the bathroom is dry, so I put all my stuff here. And it's about 5.40 a.m. right now. And I just... I don't know why like I woke up it, it's raining so heavily so I don't know if it's the noise that woke me up or was it what is it but, but it was just the most freaking random thing ever um because all my all my stuff was lying on the floor I mean there's absolutely like there's no one nowhere else to put my stuff so my bag uh, my laptop bag like everything was lying there and I literally just woke up and, and I jumped out of bed and started, like, the first thing I took out was my computer. Um, and it's, I turned it on and luckily it's working, so I hope that it will continue. <sighs> yeah, but basically, like, half of my stuff is completely soaked. Um... There's no hair dryer here and there's like no way for me to dry it and it's still pouring as you can hear. <sighs> I have been here for a couple of days and it's been raining before and before the, the inside of the house was dry so I didn't think that water could get inside. <sighs> maybe, I don't know, maybe it's... Yeah, but if I wouldn't wake up and literally like remove my computer bag last second um my computer would probably break i didn't mention it here but all my stuff were lying on the floor but they were all closed my backpack my laptop bag were all closed because i'm very afraid of all the bugs that live in the jungle and could get in it um so that's it's not because my stuff was just like lying everywhere but there was still so much water on the floor that everything got wet anyways that was a bit sad ending to my stay in Santa Catalina, but I thought I will share it with you because, well, it's very real. I mean, shit like that can happen when you travel and rainy season in Panama can be tough. And just to explain why I was so angry, well, partly it was because it was 5 a.m. and also the staff at Body didn't really help me even though I asked for help. And I had to catch a bus at 8 a.m. to my next destination, which was the only bus that day, so I couldn't really reschedule. But I survived, so I guess the moral of the story is um, don't underestimate the rain.